If you think Bigfoot is real, the earth is flat, or the sky is filled with chemtrails. Stick around, because our guest is going to school you. Unfortunately, he's doing it on the Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring you the news and reviews and interviews from the Geekoverse. We do our darndest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week, like a bunion, is my co-host, Michael Kafis. Hi. <laughs> and my other co-host, Jack Ballard. Hello. And joining us this week is a very special guest, Evan Bernstein. Hey, Evan happy to be is, a, is a co-host of the award-winning podcast, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. He is a co-author Ooh. of the upcoming book by the same name. Evan also serves as the Connecticut Chapter Chairman of the New England Skeptical Society and serves as their Technical Director for Field Investigations. Traveling the world with his co-hosts, Evan has, has given live presentations to private corporations and at educational seminars on topics including the direct harms of pseudoscience, woo in the martial arts, Arts, and the truth behind <laughs> paranormal investigations. Evan, welcome to the Mythwits. So Guys, happy thanks to have for you. having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I, I tell you, Evan, real quick before we get into the show, I just want to, I, I just want to say, uh, I don't fanboy very much, but <laughs> half the reason why I'm into podcasting is because of you guys, because of Skeptics Guide. You're one of the very first podcasts I started listening to, uh, and you know I've listened to you guys for fuck, I don't know, twelve years, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a long time since Perry, since Perry, who we all miss. Yeah. Oh gosh. And yes. uh, so, so yeah, so this this is kind of well, cool. It's really cool for me because this is kind of how I got into it. Oh, well, thanks and, very much. It's really nice to hear that. Thank you. And I, let me fanboy, too, because I will say <laughs> that uh, uh, as Pete and I are best friends, and as mm. soon as he discovered you guys, then he forced it upon me. <laughs> uh -huh. And after like three or four weeks, he's like, did you listen to him yet? Did you listen to him yet? I'm like, oh, fine, I will. As soon as I listened to the first like couple of episodes, I was hooked. And this is way back. We're talking episode. I think I came on at like episode 80, and then I did a retro and, and kind of followed back and kind of caught up with all the news, good and bad. Yeah, and exactly. uh, it, it really got me through a very difficult time in my life. So uh, it, it, it was, uh, it's been amazing and an amazing journey. And oh, we Michael, will share real. this with everyone else. Real, real nice <laughs> yeah. to hear. Thank you. Yep. I'm not going to fanboy out too much, but I do want to say that you guys have been on my regular uh, skeptic atheist podcast loop uh, for many, many years, and, and you guys are, are, are awesome, and I really enjoy what you're doing. Well, thank you so much for, for putting forth that podcast. It's, it's phenomenal. Jack, thank you very much. I mean, all those words, very kind, very appreciative. We love what we do, obviously. And we're yes. just so happy to do it and so happy to meet yeah. more people through other podcasts and other mediums as well. So we appreciate what you're doing as well. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. And I want to say one more thing. I know Mike, uh, I know Mike is, is a bird man, but, uh, you know, <laughs> monkeys beat fucking birds, Mike. Monkeys are better than birds. <laughs> uh, you know, a bird can bite a monkey's thumb off. OK, that's all I'm saying. Right, that monkey just <laughs> smash that bird into the ground repeatedly as it squawks and poops. <laughs> anyway, that's a throwback if, if you guys have it. Yeah. <laughs> and it probably depends on the bird and it depends on the monkey. Not all monkeys yeah, are right. created equal. Not all birds no, are created true, equal. True. So you, you, you get too. these optimal sort of matchups and I think it could kind of go either way. Uh, but I definitely get the sentiments. And certainly that's a that's as you were alluding to a flashback to the uh, to the years where Perry was with us and, right. and doing the show. And we just had the, the, the most rip-roaring time having fun about a monkeys versus birds debate. Who would yeah. win in the ultimate super battle? Right. Oh, that's awesome. Perry was 100% <laughs> monkeys. And yeah. Steve Novella, the, the main host of the Skeptic's Guide, is, is, a, is a bird fanatic, bird lover, an AV, you know, and, and whatever they call these AV people. Um, Aviophiles. And, uh, yes, we'll call it that. <laughs> Uh, so it was it was it was uh, quite the point of interest on the show and it just kind of took on a life of its own. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. All right. So so Evan is, uh, as, as we said, he's one of the co-hosts of the Skeptics Guide to the Universe, one of the founding members. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so so how did you guys let's let's go back to the beginning, because I just, yeah. you know, I've always always wanted this kind of stuff. Um, so podcasting was was relatively new. It'd been around a couple of years, I think. I mean, what how did you guys decide, hey, we're going to do this thing called a podcast? 
Yeah, and this was back in 2005, and you're right, podcasting had just come out. Apple had introduced pod, uh, the podcast idea in late 2004, so it was a very new idea. Uh, what, what was fortunate for us is that we were already involved in uh, skeptical activism f since 1996 and running a local yeah. skeptics society. And we, our main outreach to our members was a quarterly newsletter. So we would, you know, write articles. This is how people used to do it in the day before the internet became, you know, the internet as we know it today. Uh, so that was skepticism 1.0. We jumped into skepticism 2.0 when we realized that the podcast medium for us really was a great fit because what we would do on a regular basis, meet at least once, if not twice a week, you know, go just hang out either at Steve's house at my place or whatever, and have all these great discussions on all these great skeptical topics. It made total sense for us to go to the audio medium and just sort of capture what it is we talk about on an everyday basis. It made our workload a lot easier certainly than having to rely entirely on the written word and uh our, our the quantity of material that we could come up with just went up exponentially so it really was a win-win-win-win-win all the way it's like we were we were born for the medium in, in, in yeah. a certain way and and it you know it like every podcast you start out with zero listeners or you know you start out with you know just the hosts listening and that was exactly us and just <laughs> you know for those first couple of episodes which were certainly you know rough and i know bob and a few others from the show would like to see them you know perhaps disappear but the internet is forever <laughs> and, I remind, hey, and i remind him of that <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Classic. <Right. laughs> but no, it, it started to build up and we had 400 active members as part of our local organization, which was pretty healthy for a, yeah. for a local skeptics group because they would range anywhere from like 50 to 100, 200 right. maybe. Some of the better ones had a few had a few hundred. So we were, you know, doing very well there. And then we realized, you know, soon it was, you know, 400 listeners easily. And then 1,000 listeners became 2,000 listeners, became 5,000. We had Randy on, became 10,000 listeners. We doubled right. our audience at that point. And then brought in Rebecca Watson, who joined the team uh, as, as one of the rogues. And also we, you know, got even more exposure to even more uh, of an audience. And she just build it up like, like anything else. So it was really, it, it was a grassroots effort. And uh, just the medium really did fit us perfectly and took off from there. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I, all right. So there, I was looking for images. Uh, I used some of the images you sent me, but I, I wanted some more. Mm -hmm. um, and they're running on the, the, if anybody watching the show, they can see them. They're just kind of cycling through. Some of them like with you with Bill Nye and stuff. Um, there was, a, I came across this old picture, you guys back in the day when you were, when you were still part of that original group. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a caption on the picture in your notes. It said, uh, if you, if you see this picture, mention JJ King. Yeah, you said it was a it was an interesting story. So, so what's what's with AJ King or J, oh, sorry, J, JJ Kane? JJ Kane. When we were um, <laughs> so the New England Skeptical Society is our local group. We started as the Connecticut Skeptical Society officially in 1996, but by 1998 we, we decided we were going to be the New England Skeptical Society because we had some people helping us, mainly also in Massachusetts, not just Connecticut. JJ Kane was the representative, or he was running a small little group out of New Hampshire. So for a little while, we sort of partnered with him kind of officially, unofficially. We didn't really have anybody else doing this in New Hampshire. So we decided to kind of invite him in on board and be the New Hampshire rep portion of the New England Skeptical Society, if you follow me so far. Mm -hmm. Now, JJ came at that meeting and that, and that particular picture was a meeting that we all attended up at uh, PSYCOP which was the National Organization of Skeptics, and they were hosting a conference in which they invited in all the local skeptics group to come in, you know, obviously to see speakers, kind of like the conferences that skeptics run today, um, but specifically to bring in all the local organizations to talk about, you know, better communication amongst us all and some other things. So we're in there with a meeting. We're, we're having kind of this roundtable discussion, and Paul Kurtz is there, um, you know, who's one of the founders of the modern skeptical movement, you know, someone we all very, very much admire. Uh, Barry Carr, who's still active uh, with that group up there, Joe Nickel, paranormal, famous paranormal mm -hmm. investigator, among others. We're having this very dynamic conversation about so many different things, organizational strategies, 
um, how to get more people involved, the medium. We were talking about Skeptical Inquirer magazine, which was the magazine, you know, that's published yeah. for PSYCOP. And it, it was really this kind of uh, great discussion going on. Well, all of a sudden, in the middle of this really wonderful conversation, J.J. Kane raises his hand like this. Okay. <laughs> and everyone stops. So, And J.J. Kane, who was a, a meek person, and I say that in the kindest terms. It's just the proper description. He was just a rather meek sort of fellow. Um, decided to ask this question. Effectively, it was so incomprehensible, <laughs> and it brought the meeting to such a screeching halt. Here is this dynamic conversation. We're all into it. We're rolling. We're all playing off of sort of each other's ideas and everything. J.J. Kane raises his hand and says, um, so, and something like this, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, what effect does this have on the situa our current situation in the skeptics of the metropolis? It was really something that <laughs> incoherent and, and <laughs> intangible. An idea that we had absolutely no idea what the hell he was talking about brought that meeting to an absolute screeching halt. We didn't even know. We're looking around the room to see if anybody has an idea what the hell this guy is even saying. Dumbfounded. We're all like, this for 10 seconds of dead freaking silence and 10 seconds of silence in the middle of a dynamic conversation is it seems like three hours of silence right. in, in, in an otherwise normal conversation. So we eventually got I think what happened was that we just ignored the question altogether and moved on to talk about something else entirely. Right. And that sort of, you know, I, I won't say he kind of embarrassed us, even though, he, well, he did. And <laughs> that was sort of the beginning of the end with our association with J.J. Kane. So it's a running gag behind the scenes now. Um, and occasionally I'll turn to Steve, you know, wherever we are at a restaurant or something, I'll raise my hand. Steve, what about the impact on the metropolis? It's kind of, it's our own <laughs> meme. And we'll all just lose our, lose our, <laughs> no one else will know what the hell we're talking about, but it, man, that was a moment. That was a moment. And thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I have one other question uh, about the old days because yeah. I don't think you guys do much. Uh, well, maybe you do, but field investigations, but anymore. But uh, can you tell us uh, maybe your favorite uh, field investigation that you guys that um, were were able to do back um, in the day? Our favorite and our most high profile ones was an expose on the Warrens, Ed and Lorraine Warren, the famous mm -hmm. ghost hunters. Ooh, of which you see all of these conjuring movies now. There's a whole movie franchise dedicated to Ed and Lorraine Warren and their world. And it is literally their world. It's not unlike a D&D &D campaign. Jack, you're running, say, and it's your world. Or Michael, you're running a... Uh, what you know, a different uh, campaign, uh, a Deadlands campaign or something, and it's your world. Well, this is the world of Ed and, that Ed and Lorraine Warren lived in. That's about as precise as I can make it. And they have a new movie coming out. I hate to even, you know, promote oh, no. them or something. Don't it, say it. Don't. Just, I won't tell you the title, but you know, it has to do with with a, with a haunted doll. So you know, Ooh. which is kind of. Oh, wonder. that's their movie. Yeah, that's their movie. That's oh. it's, it's it takes place oh. in the Ed and Lorraine Warren universe. Oh, nice. Like to put it, which is totally detached from reality. But right. in any case, <laughs> it was nineteen ninety seven. Alex Jones world. Yeah, we're, 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 we were still you know early on in our you know, getting our skeptical chops under us, and still just the Connecticut Skeptical Society. The the Warrens, you know, um, have a have a house. Ed's no longer with his Lorraine is. Uh, in the town of Monroe, Connecticut. So that's very, very close to where we all are. So it seemed inappropriate for us not to sort of take on the ghost hunters. Oh, yeah. Now, these are famous people, right? We're talking Amityville horror yes. uh, re related. We're, we're, you're talking people who have a very, very high profile, probably the highest profile of any ghost hunters, if that's what you want to call them. Right. So we were intimidated. There was no doubt about it. Going into it, we're... we're extremely intimidated like have we bitten off more than we can chew here kind of doing this so but we decided we had to do it how could we how could we not do it and i'm so happy that we did do it well we wound up first going to some of their meetings of of their local ghost hunting group that that they had and that they were organizing and running and we um went to a couple of those and we actually went to ed and lorraine's house and talked to them there for several hours they gave us a tour of their 
haunted basement where the Annabelle doll lives behind the glass. And if you look at it cross-eyed, you're going to die 30 minutes later. Those kinds of stories. <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's that I'm not exaggerating, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> the uh, we, we spent a lot of time with them. We spent six months, basically, going through things that they had to offer for evidence, some video footage, some photography footage, plenty of anecdotes. I mean, you know, ghost hunting and ghost stories is, is peanut butter and jelly. You just can't really have one without the other. And at the end of it all, you know, six months, we decided to write our, our piece and our results. And we realized that, wow, these are the most overestimated people that we probably, even at that time, had come across, and they may still be to this day. Based on all the hype, publicity, uh, news coverage, press coverage that, that they get, they were about as unimp unimpressive a couple when it came to just even the most rudimentary parts of, of an investigation. It, it was really like romper room. It, it was child, it was, it was playtime. They were... They took it seriously. They thought they were doing real work. Turned out to be like yeah. just such a the they didn't even get the basics right. They were so far off base. And our article that we published, um, you know, certainly excoriated them for for what we <laughs> what we were offered as evidence from them, which was a big fat goose egg, zero, right. nothing, yeah, nada, not a damn thing. And yeah. they wouldn't even share with us some of their most precious, you know, uh, most imp impressive pieces of of apparently video evidence that they had. They let us look at a few things, but they really wouldn't give it to us to sort of analyze what was really going on. Because I think after a while they realized what was what was going to be happening here. <laughs> right, they were right. going to take them to task. And so that, that taught us a very, very important lesson uh, very early on in our skeptical activism is to uh, not be, first of all, be intimidated by the by the other side, no matter how popular they are, celebrity or, or what have you, um, and also that these people have just uh, are so far off base and so detached from reality that uh, once you really sit down with them and talk to them for a while, you it doesn't take long for you, for for a person really to kind of to kind of figure that out. So um, from then on, going forward, all of our investigations, we got tougher on every investigation that we went to. We, we you know, demanded more evidence from right. these people. And we probably did about a dozen or so when we were active in doing investigations. And uh, the, the, the evidence was just never, ever there, never even close to being there. Right. And, you know, we decided then and there that uh, this is how we're, we're definitely going to approach this and we're going to tell the truth about really what's going on here to, to yeah. people who otherwise are really enthralled and fascinated by this stuff. You know, my question with this is, is when I watch these ghost stories and, and I just think this is that phenomenon of people telling ghost stories by the fire. This is the 21st century version of that. And now we have to have proof and, and it's, it's just an, you know, more of that. But do you think they're trying to turn a profit or do they really honestly believe this stuff? Because that's what I can never really figure out. Is it a cottage industry or is this is this real to them? Well, in the case of the Warrens, uh, for example, they are they are very religious people. And that's not unusual to find when you're working within the world of people who claim that they are ghost hunters or speak to dead people and these sorts of things. They already have sort of this these religious undertones, these religious underpinnings, these real base ideas that they that they build off to achieve the conclusions that they do. So a part of them definitely, definitely believes because they're willing to believe in so much other spirituality and yeah. uh, miracles and all sorts of other things that are otherwise not not you know science says doesn't exist. But gateway then, beliefs, yeah, yeah, right. But then <laughs> I think you're right in that at a certain point, if people can realize that they can turn a dollar off of this or get some sort of notoriety that they otherwise wouldn't have yeah. before, then yeah, they'll start to do things, say things and change their behaviors in such a way that will maximize those opportunities for them. Um, and it becomes this sort of hybrid of both. Right. And I think what it ends up being is sort of a, a, a mentality where it just, it's a slight change where they're like, we are so fortunate to have this the ability to do this you know mm -hmm. we can make some money but also provide some wonderful information i think it's it goes hand in hand and a lot of times i don't yeah. think that 
uh, with and in some, this is not the case. <coughs> Sylvia, whatever her name, Sylvia Brown. But, <laughs> Sylvia Brown. Um, it, you can say yeah, it. With, with, with other people, can't I think. Sue anyone. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't say your name without laughing. But you know, with other people, the I think it is. It's, it's just yeah. that that they just have this uh, that that it's. It, one thing and the other just marries itself so well that it's in, mm-hmm. an honest and earnest intention. So, well, it, it plays off the basic emotion, the basic uh, uh, empathies in people that they want to believe. They want to believe something. They want to believe that certain things are possible. That's a very normal for a human brain to to right. to, to experience, yeah. to understand. And it and lots and lots of people, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, arguably billions of people have this sort of predisposition about them. Mm-hmm. So at a certain point, it does become a case where these people start taking advantage of that in people, mm-hmm. and which is obviously you know something we rail very much against, and we call people out for it whenever we are able to spot it. Right. That, that brings up one of the things that I, I always wonder about um, people who work in the skeptical movement a lot. Uh, I mean, I consider myself a skeptic, but I'm not like an active mm-hmm. skeptic. I don't do, uh, you know, uh, outreach skepticism. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, one of the questions I have, because there's things that, that piss me off, what um, of what things are um, piss you off? What, what things actually downright piss you off? Uh, you know, things like, you know, uh, you have your chemtrails, you have all these things and they're kind of mm-hmm. like whatever. And flat earthers mm-hmm. are kind of, uh, they're just kind of annoying, but like, I don't know, like vaccines, you know, like what, what, yeah. what really pisses you off when you see it? It has to be the health related issues yeah. because that's really where, you know, people's lives yeah. are on the line. People have lost their lives by putting their faith, their confidence in the hands of either charlatans or true believers who will lead them down a path uh, to utter destruction um, to 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 varying degrees whether it's financial whether it's emotional whether it is psychological or physical really to the point of death and uh, you hit on uh, something there certainly with vaccines that's certainly one of the topics we talk about quite regularly quite often on the show um, because it only takes uh, certain groups of a population to kind of poke holes in the entire concept or the, the truth about herd immunity in which you need to keep a certain segment of the, of the population vaccinated in order to not only obviously protect themselves and protect the most vulnerable among us, which are the very young and the very old, but for the people who really can't have the vaccination for whatever reason. And there are a small percentage of people mm-hmm. Who cannot have the vaccination so by keeping the herd immunity going you're actually protecting those people as well yes. because they're not able to take those vaccinations and it doesn't take much because if you i don't know if anyone's following what's been happening in the communities of minnesota lately and certainly also it, it happens in california as well oh, yeah. in which the anti-vaxxers find pockets of com- pockets and in, in the community of people that they can convince otherwise that vaccines, you know, are very bad for you, can cause all sorts of damage, can cause autism in your children, among other things, and they can be very convincing. And they'll stop these few dozen, two dozen, hundred, two, three, four hundred people to stop it, stop their vaccination schedules for themselves and their children. And you got a problem on your hands when yeah. when when it starts going that way. It doesn't take much. So we have to fight every day to make sure for the protection of us all that people understand that these vaccinations are safe for just about everyone unless you're one of those very few people who can't have the vaccinations your children are not going to get autism you're not going to develop autism (laughs) or anything else you're not going to get mercury poisoning and you're not going to have all of these things that they try to scare you with and it's not big pharma no. You know, the big medical industry, you know, not the, we can yeah. talk about medical industry if you want. There's pluses and minuses, but this is not one of them. You're fighting the wrong fight in that time. And in the right. meantime, people will be losing their lives. Yeah, because yep. pharmacies, I mean, pharmacies, doctors, hospitals, they, I mean, my understanding is they don't really make hardly anything off of vaccines. That is not a big business. That is not a good business model. If you were going to invest, if you had a lot of money and you were going to invest it into something, mm-hmm. vaccines would not be something you'd invest in because you would get a very minimal return on it, right? I mean, they're, they don't really make that much money off those, do they? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, I don't have those statistics sort of in front of me. And if Steve were here, he'd probably know not. it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he could he could give us some some better statistics on that, but I believe overall that that that's correct. Uh, it's not it, it, it's not some uh, scheme for for these uh, corporate these uh, private corporations to rake in billions of dollars and take advantage of people that way. Right. And then and then you run into things where people are just they, they're just ignorant of, of physics and science and stuff where, mm-hmm. you know, they, they talk about chemtrails and it's like that's impossible. I mean, look, it, it first it's just it's not that I don't believe in it. I, I don't. But I don't believe in it because it's basically impossible. Like the dispersion, mm-hmm. it's 30,000 feet in the air. You know how much volumetric, I mean, how concentrated would that shit have to be? It would eat through the side of the plane. I mean, for if it had any effect at all by the time it got down, you know, even if they were spraying it, it's, it's just it's just not realistic. Yeah, and you think about it in the terms of plausibility as far as the amount of people that would have to be covering up something like this. You're into right. yeah, deep into conspiracy yeah. theory realm here. Yeah. And you're talking about hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people that would all have to be keeping their mouth shut uh, about this. And that just doesn't happen. You know, five people can barely keep a secret. I know I work on yeah. a show with five people. You're right. <laughs> and, <laughs> right. You know, and to expect that that everybody's, uh, you know, keeping quiet. It's the same. It's it's the same thing yeah. with uh, people who believe that 9-11 was an inside job crafted oh. by the C- CIA and whatever other sort of conspiracy threads you'd like to, to pull into 9-11. What am I? Same, same thing. One of my big pet peeves is moon hoaxers, people who mm-hmm. think we didn't go to the moon. And as a kid growing up, I spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. at the Air and Space Museum mm. and looking at all this evidence of the moon landing. And it was just I was just like, why don't you just come with me on a field trip one day and let me show you this exhibit and then tell me because there's an there's a picture of the moon rover and there's all these people, probably 30 people standing around it. And it was the teams from Ford and GM that worked together to build it. And all of these guys would have had to go to their deathbeds on this crazy thing. You know what I mean? Like, how? what are the odds of that? You know, it's just... It, it's impossible. It, right. It's in yeah. the bill. It, it, the, if you were to put it to statistics, I'm not a st- statistician. People are inherently bad at statistics. My best yes. guess... My best guess is just someone who plays fantasy football every once in a while is that it, that if you were to put odds to it, it would have to be in the billions, if not tens yeah. of billions. It just will yeah. not. Ha- it will not happen. Would not happen. Cannot happen. And, right. and you know, I'll take that up in order of magnitude because I'm a contractor that works for the government, and I don't think the government has enough. Uh, enough of this competency? shit together. Competency, yes, to, to actually make yeah. any conspiracy happen. I mean, like when I hear conspiracy, the government's covering it up. I'm like, ah, covering it. Up. That's hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's one thing that if there's one thing the government doesn't do, it's cover up. Right. It's a point. It's a point. Yeah. He did it. He, he yeah. did it. I didn't right. do it. That, right. That's what the government does. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. all right, we've covered moon hoaxing. We've mm-hmm. covered vaccinations, chemtrails. Ev, tell us what else what are some newer topics that you guys are going to plan to cover in the upcoming SGU book oh I'm glad you brought that up thank you very much so yes there's a book coming as you also (laughs) mentioned in the beginning it does not have an official title yet we are hoping to land the title of the skeptics guide to the universe because that is how we wrote the book uh, as a guide for people to get a both an introduction into skepticism, sort of a skepticism one on 101, what this is all about. But there's also plenty in there for people who are very familiar with the skeptical movement. And they, I think there's plenty of, in there for them to learn about as well. What we did is we uh, went through a lot of different topics and sort of picked out some of the ones that make sort of the best examples for uh, what comprises a skeptical mindset. Uh, We talk a lot about the human brain and a lot about the fallibility of the human brain. You're going to see that as a running theme throughout the book, certainly. And as Steve is the main author on the book, and Steve Novella is a neurologist, Yale University. He is a, well, the biggest brain expert that I know of, uh, certainly. And plenty of people do defer to him for his... Uh, for his expertise, um, you're going to see and you're going to read uh, that so much of what is mistaken for in the real world or misperceived, misunderstood, not understood well, um, and outright uh, you've been either lied to, tricked about, uh, or, or somehow led astray, it comes back to your own brain and the fallibilities yeah. 
that are hardwired, I hate using that word, Steve doesn't like it when I use that word, but that are in your brain that you have to constantly, first of all, remember <laughs> that, that your brain is working this way and do certain things to combat your baseline of being susceptible to these sorts of things that can lead you astray in hundreds and hundreds of different directions. Sure. So I think that's mm -hmm. going to be the biggest takeaway, I think, from the book. And it's, it's really an eye opener in that way. Wow. Right, right. The failability of I, I memory, the, the the crappy perception that brains have. Oh, gosh, like yes. Pareidolia, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. all those, yeah. Eyewitness testimony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Worthless. Oh, gosh. So many, uh, so, so many different ways our brain uh, tricks us and fools us every day. And it has to do it. There are evolutionary advantages for your brain working this mm -hmm. way. It's not this all, it, it's not this quantum computer that can be thinking and doing all of these functions all the time at maximum capacity, just kind of, kind of churning away. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's wetware is right. Steve likes to call it. <laughs> this part of the brain now is working on this particular problem. And this part of the brain over here, which is uh, figuring out kind of what's on the periphery of my vision. This is not really being engaged yeah. right now. You know, someone could come at me with a club from this side while I'm talking to the camera right here. <laughs> I'm, I'm more concentrating what I'm talking to you guys about. I don't know what the heck's going on in the next room 10 feet behind me. I can't concentrate on that because I'm because I'm talking to you. And just one of many different sort of little yeah. examples is your, your brain doesn't work that way. It's not this. And it's certainly it's certainly not a recording device. Right. That's for darn no. sure. And you alluded also early, just uh, just a few minutes ago to uh, eyewitness testimony. Yeah. Forget it. Forget it. And I think in, at some point in the book, we bring up the example of the JFK assassination and the people who were there at Daly Plaza on that day, one of the most memorable days in American history. I think maybe for someone of our generation, it would be more equivalent to where were you when the space shuttle Challenger, yeah. you know, yeah. blew up in the sky. Yeah. Sort of the seminal mm -hmm. event that you absolutely have a picture of in your brain, exactly where you were, who you were with, what you were eating at the time when you heard it. Yep. And you know what? Um, if you go back, if you had the ability to go back from what you think now to what actually happened, you're wrong. You're going right. to find you're wrong. The vast yeah. majority of people are wrong. And I say the JFK assassination because they interviewed people that day uh, and took uh, testimony from people who were right there at the moment. Then they went back a few years later, just a few years later, and interviewed these people on one of the most incredible days in American history and asked them again sort of similar questions. What did you see? What did you remember? wrong they got they, right. they yeah. gave they gave different they gave different accounts of what went on because it all gets manipulated once it goes through yeah. the news cycle your brain starts to put together other things and confabulates something that the, the newsman said with something your neighbor said with something you remember and it turns into what we call a false memory your brain right. is loaded with false memories you have to remember that folks all the time and it is a good thing we do have recording devices because as the famous Warren Wolf used to say, let's go to the videotape and see exactly what you said back on, on those <laughs> yeah. days or, or what was recorded. So I'm very glad we have all these mediums to record these things. We need it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like like uh, the body cams on police officers. I think it's yes. going to be good for everybody. It's going to be good for the officers in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when they well, turn them on. When yeah, they yeah, turn them on. When, when they turn yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. Are we going Fair that enough. direction? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what, what, what? All right, so I have, I have one more skeptical question before right. we, we move on to anything else because it's it's one of the ones that, that I've – I've wondered a lot, um, and it's it's a tiny bit controversial, so I, I don't want to go down any kind of rabbit holes or anything. All right, no rabbit uh, holes. Just, right. just a surface level thing. Um, there are some subjects that, that I, I worry that don't get the, the skeptical treatment because, you know, we're, we're quick to, to, to put it on vaccines and anything science-related. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some things that, that I wonder, and, and I, I just want, because you're involved in the community, you see what goes on on a much higher level than I do. Uh, I'm sure not everything, but, but way more than I do. Um, do you feel as though uh, like like hot button subjects some of the hot button subjects out there get get the skeptical treatment for example things like um you know the racism and black lives matter that kind of stuff mm -hmm. uh say mm -hmm. feminism i'm mm -hmm. not trying to pick on anything one thing in particular but you know what i mean all those things mm -hmm. that if you if you go against it if you go well, wait a minute now i don't really uh and then everybody kind of jumps on you like oh well you're a racist or a misogynist or, or whatever whatever it is um yeah. Do you feel that that sometimes people shy away from those, even in the skeptical community, even even people high up, because they're worried about backlash? I mean, is it is it getting fair treatment, or is there a little bit of an issue there? Do we need work? 
Well, I think in the context that you framed it, sure, we need work. We do need to be better uh, about discussing these things. We do need to have uh, more facts, frankly, at our at our disposal when we decide to make certain arguments for, or against, or somewhere in between. What happens is, well, I mean, we're people. We're, we're right. emotional mm-hmm. creatures. Um, we we often think with this as as opposed yeah. to this, and mm-hmm. you know, no matter how much we're using this. This get you know your heart still talks to you sure. in certain ways. You know yeah. you and whoever mm-hmm. you are watching this right now, you have certain very strong feelings and emotions about certain ideas or certain concepts that you know may be based in fact, but perhaps maybe more is kind of just the right thing for people to do. You know, go along sort of those lines, sort of more of a. Oh boy! I hope no one gets mad at me. Sort of a, a liberal mindset when it when, mm-hmm. when it comes when it comes mm-hmm. to these things. Um, I'm very liberal in some things. I'm very conservative in other things, and I'm yeah. right in the middle in other things. It depends on the issue. It's about facts. It's yeah. about evidence. You have to. We have to remember to sort of come back to these basics of skepticism and introduce them more into those dialogues than we've certainly than we've been doing. And I've seen some things on Facebook and other places. In which, you know, there are some people out there I am very, very fond of their work, you know, as skeptics, things they've written, uh, conferences I've attended with them, you know, panels I've been on with them to talk about very good skeptical issues. Yet I find that some of these people, they do fall short in other arenas when it does come to things that hit the political spectrum a little bit more. And I wish they would just take a little bit more time to, A, learn the uh, opposite opinion or the opposing opinion to what sure. they feel or what they argue, and B, bring more facts to the table to support your position. Um, right. Right. Because I also do find out that when I do talk to people about some of these subjects, and I start bringing up some some things that they've never heard about or nobody ever told them about, they didn't read what this person actually said. Right. And it's a bit awkward because then I have to go, well, maybe we should table this conversation for a little while before we can start to go down yeah. a road that we really, you know, don't necessarily need to go down right. until we know a little bit more. I think if that attitude had a bit more prevalence in these sorts of discussions, even among skeptics, uh, we'd be doing ourselves a much better service. And frankly, the skeptical community would be do- would be doing a much better service to the skeptical community at large. Yeah, I think. Hey, Pete. Yeah, yes, sir. I was going to say, you and I were talking about this before, and one of the things that made me think about, uh, as Evan started talking, is we don't have Christopher Hitchens around anymore. Ooh. <laughs> Remember, like, Christopher Hitchens would say, yeah, no, you know what you're talking about. And then he would, like, if it's one thing he had a gift for, it was the gift of, like, you know, mm-hmm. throwing the truisms and the yeah. and the things. And, I mean, yeah. it, he was almost like the punching bag for, like, well, you know, everyone's <laughs> thinking it, but he said it. Right. <laughs> I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought up Hitchens. What I've been – I'll tell you what I've been doing lately is um, – I've been watching some of his videos and things on YouTube Mm -hmm. and um, actually uh, listening back to the audio again and and again and getting kind of a better grasp of some of the finer points that he's making in in certain concepts. And, you know, he died several years ago. A lot of things I'm listening to, he was saying, you know, in the 2000s, mid 2000s, you know, 10 and 15 years ago, uh, a lot having to do with Islam. Okay. In, partic- in particular, mm-hmm. because obviously, yeah. you know, if you know the man, he was obviously quite against every religion across the board, right. certainly for because they all told the same falsehood as far as he was concerned. But he brought up at the time that there was something happening w- in, in the 21st century in relationship to Islam that can't be ignored, that we are unfortunately sort of ignoring at our, at our own peril and gave us sort of these warning signs. And I think for a lot of people today, if they were to go back and listen to these things, they would be one of two two things. Um, one, they would say, "Oh my gosh, he he was right about a lot a lot of things yeah. that he predicted would probably would would be coming to a city a, a near you somewhere in the Western yeah. world." Or two, you would be so offended <laughs> by by his by his you know honesty, his brutal honesty, really yeah. about it. Yeah. That you would say it's so nowadays politically incorrect that how could he dare uh, slam Islam so badly, you know, when we're trying to be more, you know, inclusive, understanding, tolerant, what have you. 
it it just would I think really people would freak out about it if they went yeah, back and yeah. went back and listened and listened to these things. So well, Sam Harris that I love so much. Is, he, Sam Harris is getting pounded all the time too for mm-hmm. being, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Islamophobic, and and he's saying uh, very much the same message. I love Sam Harris, by the way. I, I try to bring him up as much as possible, but uh, th- yeah, he's uh, the same kind of thing going on. And. And I, you know, one of the things that, that I, I'm most, I don't know, one of the things that scares me most about what the trend of where things are going, and I'm hoping that it'll come to a head and people will go, oh, you know, because sometimes it takes like things to get extreme for people to notice what's going on to go, oh, wait a minute, we need to back off this some and, and, and things change. But um, the, what I call thought policing, you know, and, and in grouping mm-hmm. and out grouping and, and group mm-hmm. think, uh, that's scary because I, I think a lot of these people think they're doing the right thing and they, and they, you know, they, a lot of their ideals are kind of lofty, you know. They they want everybody. They want equality. I want equality. Fuck. I, mm-hmm. I want. I want everyone. I, honestly, I, I wish we didn't say like, you know, uh, uh, say you know, uh, black people, white people. I just we said people. You know, I like that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but but at the same time, you know, um, I, I'm just worried that people get very emotional and and you can't talk about these things. And I'm like, God, yeah. you know, when we can't talk about stuff, that's really scary. That's more scary than the stuff that we're talking about. Uh, I was having this exact conversation, practically this exact conversation, with someone recently at our own conference, the Northeast Conference on Science and Skepticism, the Nexus Nexus Conference (laughs) that that we did. And we were talking in in the bar really about this particular topic. And um, the the subject of the word equality sort of came up, which is a very important sort of word to properly define. And I think when you're engaging with people about equality on certain things i think it's best to sort of define the term ahead of time are we talking about equal opportunity or are we talking about equal results and what is it you know where where are we in this do we want everybody to have the same exact or similar results in any aspect of life because that's definitely one thing that and Mm -hmm. then we can talk about that or should we be talking about the the opportunities that allow people to do whatever it is that they wish to pursue, you know, sure. like mm-hmm. liberty, pursuit of happiness, and that sort of um, freedom that comes with that definition of equality. For two very different things, they get conflated, and it's the source of a lot of arguments, I find yes. out. So I stop, yeah. I tend to stop people when we start talking about matters of equality to just to make sure we know we're talking about the same thing. And you can go in either direction that you like, mm-hmm. but it, 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 it saves a lot of uh, uh, agony, I think, yeah. if, you, if you define yeah. your terms clearly. Yep. Uh, yep. Pete, I have to, I have to give uh, Bruce a shout out in the uh, chat room because, and uh, are you familiar with Bruce Press? Am Are you familiar with, with Bruce Press? Uh, you should know Bruce Press, right? Okay, so he's in the chat room, and he said this. This is amazing. I love this. He's, he has to get a shout-out for this. He said that the gender studies, the cultural appropriation, the feminism, the misogyny, they're all like the third rail of skepticism. And I think, oh, my God, that is so awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Bruce so, the third rail. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Bruce is a good man. Good man. Yeah, he yeah. is. He is. We, we love Bruce. Big friend of the show. Big friend of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so there's, there's this, uh, Mike, you're, uh, you're going down to, uh, North Carolina for something. Uh, what, what is that you're going down there for? Well, evidently that the, uh, sun will be, uh, in between the earth and the, and, uh, the, uh, moon, the, no, what is going on? The <laughs> I moon hope not. Between the <laughs> it's earth and the sun. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to die. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a skeptical the problem. The moon <laughs> will be between the sun and the and the earth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in such a way that I will uh, go down to uh, North Carolina and visit my mom. Hi, mom. She's in the chat hey, room as well. And uh, we are going to uh, head down to Greenville, which is in the path of totality. Nice. And uh, I'm definitely going to get a chance, and I'm going to see this sucker with my bare, my bare eyeballs, hopefully, with some glasses. I can't and, see anything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please, Peter. That's right. Yeah, look at him. He's got it. He's got it. Hey, so, I got yeah. St- Stephen Ramsey sending me a box of those. If you want some for you and your boy, let me know. I got. He's gonna give me like oh, twelve yeah? of them. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, as he said, but you'll have him before that? Okay, yes. my mom and I were already online. Evan, actually, mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. Uh, on one of the episodes a couple mm-hmm. uh, weeks ago, we're talking about, oh, you know, it was like, don't eat the green M&Ms, you know, <laughs> but, you know, don't use these glasses, but these are the companies that are reputable. So my mom and I were doing some research, but Double I know yeah. that Stephen Ramsden, um, you may be familiar with him as well. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. does the solar project at, yep. uh, at Dragon Con. So he, you know... Uh, we're gonna that we'll use his that'll be great yeah no doubt definitely, definitely it is when you think about it, it, it in which the, the great american solar eclipse august 21st 2017 this is an event that's been burned in my brain since i was a nine-year-old boy when the last total solar eclipse happened somewhere in the yep. in the united states i've been waiting you know practically all my life for, for this i know a few <laughs> yeah. things about it uh yes double check your your eyewear there's going to be hundreds of millions of people probably about 200 million people uh Trying to trying to watch this, and even if some of these in a very thin band, yeah, in, in, a, very, in a very thin band, about <laughs> about seventy miles wide, but but the entire length, but the entire length of the country, first time that's happened in a hundred years, and yeah. uh, first time in five hundred years uh, that it's happened that it only touches the uh, the Americas. By the way, uh, nowhere yeah. else, nowhere else in the world will you be able to see this. So everybody's coming here for this. And, you know, when you've got 200 million people up there looking at the sun, you know, you would like to think that everybody's eye protection uh, is is going to be mm-hmm. adequate. Uh, there's going to be some that are inadequate. And unfortunately, I think some people will get injured, you know, obviously not intentionally. Double check uh, whatever you've ordered, whatever you have. Uh, go online, research it. Just make sure it has all the correct specifications uh, that you are required there's plenty of sources uh to find it you know there's endless resources out there about mm-hmm. the eclipse but that's one of the most important things you can do make sure your your eyewear is uh 100 safe for you yeah i'll tell you there's one place you can go if you have any questions yeah. you can go to mm-hmm. charliebates.org or go to the facebook page of, of charlie bates um uh I, I, it's charlie bates look it up you'll find it charlie bates solar um solar astronomy solar astronomy uh they will answer your questions they'll let you know they're they're the, the fantastic group probably i think it's the biggest the biggest solar astronomy uh group um in 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 the world right i think mike isn't that what they said Yes, it is yeah. nonprofit. Yeah, okay, all right. So, uh, yeah. so, so you're going down. Are you going down to where are you going? Uh, what part? I'm going to visit my mom. She's uh, just out. She's in Hendersonville, about 30 miles north of Greenville. So mm-hmm. we're going to on Monday. We're going to drive down to Greenville. I have a couple of places I'm looking at. Uh, maybe like uh, Foreman University, or we're going to check out some star parties. You know, some places that are having some you know eclipse parties. Um, and and just I I'm it, you know. <laughs> I'm not a praying man, but I really am <laughs> praying. I will pray that the skies are clear. Yes, because yes, just you're here. Uh, such you're a big here. suck for it to be cloudy, you know? Oh, uh, and, and, and I, yeah, it, I, I do feel for wherever it is going to be along that path because the chances are there is there are going to be some people who will be clouded out of the event. I, yes. You know, but yes, if you do, if you do worship or you do believe in something, you know, beyond the the, the realm of science, go for it. Because <laughs> do the anti If you're, you're going to shoot, if you're going to shoot your yeah. wad, shoot it on this. Yeah. Definitely. Right. Well, that's just the yeah. thing. <laughs> The moon is involved and the mm-hmm. sun is involved. So yes. should I be praying for the sun god or yes. the moon god? Yes. Phoebe or yes. I'm not all, sure. Cover all your faces, all of them, man. All of them. Yeah. Come on. Remember I'm Benny? Going. Hey, do you remember Benny from the Mummy? He wore every yeah. every holy symbol and he would just pray on all of them. <laughs> That's right. That's all you need to do. Hell, I'm 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 saying a prayer to Thor and Odin before. There you I go. go. Yeah. Thor's a good one. Thor, Thor will clear it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, what I want to do, and Pete, and, and this yeah. out, we'll, we'll stop and we'll, we'll move on. But what I really want to do is make sure that I'm going to be somewhere that they're going to have a broadcast from the NASA feed that's going to be above the clouds. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So wherever we are, we're going to yeah. make sure we're, we're right. doing that. So. so, so two things, two things. So Stephen Rands, I've, I've been, uh, I keep, hey, keep, hate to keep saying it, but he's, he's been a really good source of information for this. He said two, two things. He said that were important. He said even if it's overcast, it's still going to be a great experience. He mm-hmm. said you don't have to actually see that. He He's like, because it's going to get dark. You're going to feel the lights. All the lights going to change. It, the colors mm-hmm. all change. It's, it's an experience, yep. whether it's cloudy or not. And secondly, he said, you don't have to travel to the band to have an experience, you know, have a wonderful experience. So if you can't make it, still go outside and look up. He said, it's still going to be amazing. Even if you even if you got a little sliver of the moon left, he said, that's still going to be awesome. So don't don't yeah, not, I, don't get discouraged and don't not go out and look at it. Right. I agree. I heard I, people I, I, that couldn't travel to the band say that. I, that's what I heard. That 
you know, if you can't make it down there, that it's, yeah. it's okay. Sour you don't grapes. Have to make it down. Sour grapes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I'll see what you're doing. I'll give you another quick tip. I, I'm going to be. I'm going to be actually in Oregon uh, for the solar, oh, for wow. the solar eclipse. Uh, I chose Oregon because it's one of the states that has the lowest chance, historically has the lowest chance of cloud cover. So I Oh, man, you're serious. Wow. Oh, yeah. 39 years. I've been waiting 39 years. Yeah. Um, wow. And I already started, they already started talking in the Portland television stations about what the traffic is going to be like that day. Because I'm going to be in Portland uh, the night before, waking up early in the morning and heading down. There. you got to get about an hour south mm-hmm. of Portland to get to the line of totality. They said treat it like it's going to be a, a traffic in a blizzard because yeah. that's how congested these roads and things are going to be. Wow. So if you are going to be dr- planning on driving there that morning, that afternoon, whenever, leave yourself extra hours and hours yeah. because no matter where you're going to be, those highways are going to be clogged. Don't underestimate it. And I would really hate for any of you to, to miss out in it, you know, just sitting in your car, just 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 outside the line. If you're pl- if you've been waiting as long as I have. Plan, plan, plan accordingly. I know I'm leaving, right. you know, many, 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 many hours before right. on what was normally a one hour drive. Right. I'm not missing <laughs> oh, wow. this. Yeah, if, if you know, if you could sit out overnight for a uh, fucking iPod, you could sit out for this. <laughs> Camp out! God damn it! Right. Damn right! Come on! Right. I mean, where where are your priorities, people? Right, seriously. <laughs> yeah. All right, so look, we're running low on time, but uh, I, I I don't want to go away without mentioning um, your appearances. So you got two appearances coming up, two big ones. Uh, one that we love, but we're not going to this year. Dragon Con. Oh. Damn, why not? I want to see you guys at Dragon it's Con. Money, money, it's the money thing. Yeah, I know. It's about, yeah. it's about the money thing. I hope to see you at a future Dragon Con. You're right. We will yep. be there. That is Labor Day weekend of this of this year, so early September, and I hope to see so many of you there. Yeah, oh, yeah. and they, they do and a good job. They the, we, We've been down there. Um, uh, the whole crew is really accepting. You guys are really friendly. Uh, and you're going to do the you're gonna do the private show um, where you can That's buy right. tickets yeah. for that? Yeah. Yep, That's there'll be two time. recordings. We're going to do a live show, uh, which everyone can can attend, and then we'll be doing a private recording of an SGU episode, which we will be having details on, starting with the new SGU coming up this coming Saturday. So keep your ears Ooh. open for that. Right, one. and it's Pete. Oh. Pete and I have a very distinct honor of being two of the first uh, two in a in a small you know audience of the first private recording that you guys ever did at Dragon oh, Con. I still I still have my ticket. Sweet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's worth it. It's totally it's worth it. It's a good time. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's really It intimate. is a good time. We yeah. cut loose, especially yeah. Jay. And you yes, know, Jay's already awesome. loose to begin with, so yeah. 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 Watch he was out. born loose. And then uh, <laughs> and then you have CSI Con. What what is CSI uh CS Psycon. Yes. Oh, Psy- yeah. oh, I've heard it as Psycon, right? Okay. I want to go to this so Damn. bad. I'm yeah. dying. Yeah, and uh, you know, a couple of years they they move it around the country. It's not always in the same place. This year it is in Las Vegas. In the mm-hmm. past they've had it in New Orleans. They had it in uh, Nashville uh, one year. So so the conference has moved around in the past. But this year we'll be at Las Vegas. We will be going there. That's the last weekend in October. October twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirtieth. I believe that is. And uh, there's going to be a great lineup of skeptical speakers, you know, people talking about humanism and atheism as well, some very uh, prominent names uh, in the world of skepticism. And you can uh, look them up online, C-S-I-C-O-N, that's Sicon, uh, dot com or dot org. I forget off the top of my head, but look them up. You'll see all the great speakers. Also, SGU, Skeptics Guide to the Universe, will obviously be there, and we would love to see you there. You know, Evan, I hear I hear Baltimore is really nice in October, late October. So if you know they're yeah. considering a city, you know, Baltimore would be really great venue to have that in. Yeah. You know, just, <laughs> really big shoes. Just saying, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, we should. I mean, well, who knows? Uh, we you know we do have um, uh, the book's not going to be out until uh, next summer, we believe. Summer of eighteen is is the as best as we can estimate a release date right now. And we anticipate that we will be probably uh, traveling around a bit to, uh, right. you know, to promote the book and promote oh, the work sweet. that we're doing. I would not be surprised since we are all East coast based that Baltimore might actually be on that list. Hey, so, when it comes tuned. to hearing how bad Baltimore is, remember, be skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. It, it, no. Some things are true. Some things are true. All cities have their have their issues. Yeah. And, yes. you know, and, 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 well, and cities have great, great, great things about them as well. So and Baltimore's Pete, you know no what? Exception. I think that for next year, because, yeah, you know, uh, 
you guys just had uh, Evan. You guys just had Nexus, mm -hmm. and it was a success as always. I'm hopefully that you guys will have it next year. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could send word along, and uh, you know, maybe we as the uh, Mythwits could come up and uh, sort of do a show like we did at Balticon. We do it like a show every night. Have a little panel, have some fun, some games, and some uh, you know some enjoyment maybe we could uh have something going well i know a few people on the inside perhaps yeah, you know say, I mean, uh, maybe perhaps it's, it's a little early but you know that. presuming that no, maybe you're having a good time it, it's actually not early because it's going to be our 10th anniversary uh event wow. uh, 10 years mm. we've been running i can believe it nexus so we wow. already have some very very special things uh, I'm going to say, I can't say lined up yet because I'm not sure it's 100% sure, but if everything we have planned comes to fruition, it is going to be definitely the best Nexus. And I'm not just saying that. There's going right. to be wow. some spectacular people. And so if we were going to be, so we were gonna guys, be there. If you were going to come to any Nexus, this any, would be the, yeah. definitely be the one to come to. So well, if, if you need any low hanging fruit to like, you know, hang in the tree, we're, we're always, we're always available. <laughs> we are very low fruit. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, tell you what, let's, we, we got a mm. game. We're going to, we're, we're doing something a little different. We used to have a game we run along with the show. Uh, we're mm -hmm. trying to split that off because just formatting it's, it's, it's a whole thing anyway. So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to end the show, but don't go anywhere. If anybody's watching live and if you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, and if you're listening to it before, before the Friday that we do the release, uh, this show gets released on, on Sunday night, late, late Sunday night. Uh, the game show gets le released on Friday, but we're going to record it right after this. So basically we're going to end the show and then just hang tight. It'll start back up again and we'll run the game show. Evan has uh, gracefully or graciously uh, decided to join us for the game, which is which is awesome. It's a good game. You're gonna like this. I don't even funny. know what the game is. No, no I know. Honest. You're gonna trust <laughs> me. Trust could, me. Could it's a drinking good. game. For all no, this is science or fiction. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, We're not no, gonna no, do that. To you. No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, let me give out a few links. So we have, um, uh, of course, www.theskepticsguide, that's S-K-E-P-T-I-C-S, guide.org. Uh, they also have a Facebook page, The Skeptics Guide. Uh, you can follow Evan on Twitter at E-V-A-N-S-G-U. Uh, Evan, do you want to, is that, is that all the links you want to share? Is there any other links you want to share before we uh, head out? Oh, and uh, check out our Facebook page as well. We would love to have you there, yeah. Skeptics Guide, the Skeptics Guide on Facebook. Uh, yep. You know, it's a very active site, always putting up great stuff every single day. You should really check hey. us out there. Hey, Evan, I checked out your Twitter. How did uh, 2015 go for your commit commitment to use Twitter more? Oh, How that? Uh, I think we're breaking up here. Uh, <laughs> the microphone. Hello. Hello. I can't. I can't hear you anymore. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Evan, it's okay. I hate Twitter. I hate Twitter. That's what I'm going to say. We use it because we have to. But. Well, okay. Yes. I, 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 will say, I will say this, you know, because we are we are expanding out into different mediums, uh, the book market, obviously. Uh, so there will be a certain necessity to sort of get uh, back into the Twitter habit. And, you know, SGU as well as all the individuals, uh, individual people involved. Yeah. So, so well, I'm willing, I I'm willing to help you out. I appreciate that. I'm willing to help you out. Thank you. <laughs> Careful, because I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> right, right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Uh, All right. Let me get my notes here. All right, everybody. You've just enjoyed another awesome episode of the Mythwits podcast. And this time I say it with fervor. Catch us live on Twitch Mondays at 930 p.m. Eastern time. Jump into the chat room and ask our guests questions like we had a few in there, Mike. We had Bruce. We had Mama Marsh. Uh, we had yeah. a few people. Uh, not as many as I thought we would have, but whatever. Nope. Get what you get, right? Uh, if you missed our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes at YouTube forward slash Mythwits. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, Podbean, all as the Mythwits. We got that name everywhere because it's not a real word. Do the follow, like, subscribe thing wherever <laughs> it's appropriate. Please give us a bunch of stars and a review on iTunes. We need that. Uh, if you screenshot it and post it on our Facebook page, I will personally send you something, but you're going to have to be skeptical about it because I you never know what it's going to be. However... Jack and I have been putting together a promotion. We're going to start giving shit away for giving us good reviews and stuff. That's and, right. And we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> Blatant um, bribery. Blatant bribery, yes. Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. If you like us, you're bound to like other great shows there as well. Check out TSRPN.com. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Make sure to check out Studio187.com for more cool stuff. And please join our mailing list. Uh, it's right there on the front page. Just hit the join button. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike... Hey, Mom, you feel that? That's ghost cold.